Today I'm gonna show you some of the best games of the strongest female chess player, Judith Polgar. Let's now move to the other game where she's a little bit older, but she's already a grandmaster. Yes, our next fact is about her being a grandmaster at the age of 15. Can you imagine grandmaster at the age of 15? And she broke some of the records. She broke some of the records and uh, she became one of the youngest grandmaster in the chess history. So let's let me bring the next game. In this game, Judith Polgar is with white pieces against Hungarian Grandmaster Berkesh and he has castled on the long side, which means that she's going now to start attack on the king side. So her move is knight to g5. She attacks the pawn on h7. Black has to push this pawn on h6 to counterattack the knight, but Judith is not going to move this knight. Instead, she gives check here on h7. King moves aside and now bishop to e4. The rook is under attack and now black makes really weird looking move h takes g5. Black sacrificed this rook here on a8 and I was wondering what's going on can I just take this rook here and Lizzie was screaming out like yes take it take it it's free rook it's strong piece so why not to take it but if white takes this rook black can play g4 attack the knight we don't want to drop this knight so knight has to move away and when knight moves away now bishop comes on g5 and attacks queen on this diagonal and wins this queen so white cannot really save if you play f4 we do have here en passant and there's no other pieces that you can cover this thread here on this diagonal so white is losing a queen so there was a trap that judith has not filed for so after h takes g5 she played a very strong move g5 the rook is still hanging so when black moves this rook away now she plays h4 so she wants to open up the h file and then checkmate the black's king if black takes here this pawn then white plays g5 now h4 pawn has no guard and this pawn will be dropped next move and then white will bring another rook white will double this rook on h file and black's king will be checkmated in the end of the line so uh, we have seen something very similar in the first game when she sacrificed central pawn on d4 then she sacrificed pawn on e file she's doing the same here she sacrificed h4 pawn and then she sacrificed g5 pawn so with this uh, maneuvering and with this moves she is trying to expose king even more well, after h4 in the game, uh, something different happened. Uh, the opponent decided to play g6 and then to hide this king on g7. Uh, here, what is really nice idea is probably to double the rooks on h file, but Judith decided to bring the queen on the king side and she played queen to f4. Black made here bishop to b7, just trying to develop the queen side and also trying to trade more pieces. And now this is the moment when Judith wins the game and she found this brilliant move. She went rook to h7. This rook is not guarded. This is a rook sacrifice. Now black has to take a rook. If black moves away with the king, then another rook comes on h1 and there will be a checkmate in just two moves. So black has to accept this sacrifice and now we have queen h2. So she gave up the rook just to bring the queen on the h file with a check. So she brought the strongest piece into the king side attack and black's king is just hopeless black played king to g8 who comes now to h1 and the threat is checkmate on the back rank so black took this pawn with a check white decided to take this bishop because if you move away with your king there might be some moves like bishop h4 and this game can continue longer so this is really funny bishop sacrifice here if you take and i'll take this bishop and the rook is hanging there's not checkmate in two moves or three moves so it can get really complicated instead of this judith decided just to capture this dark square bishop and after queen takes she played f4 now queen is under attack and there is a checkmate on the board in just 
one move. Queen h7 or queen to h8 is a checkmate and it's a game over. The opponent had to resign here after f4. I hope you liked this uh, game. It was really incredible starting from the very beginning. In the end of the video, I would like to bring another interesting fact about Judith Polgar. She is one of the three siblings who played chess. Her elder sister, Susan Polgar, is woman world champion and her youngest sister, Sofia Polgar, is woman grandmaster. So they were training together and they supported each other to grow strong. That's why they are one of the best chess players in the world. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned a lot about Judith and her style of the play. And I wish that one day you are as strong as Judith Polgar. Make sure that you subscribe to the channel and come back for the next one. And don't forget to tell Funmaster Mike that you liked this video. Bye bye from me and Lizzie and see you in the next one. Welcome to my world. Time to attack! A knight on the rim is grim. Are you sure you know what you're doing? Wow.